The views and opinions of this podcast are solely our own and in no way meant to offend or upset anyone. We ad-lib, paraphrase and imitate to convey reviewed content only. It's a bit of a laugh. Enjoy! I'll be the last one left when the lights go out I'm down to one last breath but I can't stop now We all fall down sometimes, yeah but that's just life So cross my heart and hope to die, baby I was born to f- Fight the fear when I feel like dying I'm trying to fly high but I'm not a pilot, can't deny it There's some days I feel idiotic, just a product of a system where you're lucky just to make Hello everybody, welcome to another episode of What's the Script, now episode 20 of series 3, and uh, my name's Craig, and with me as always is my equally as important bearded co-host, Chris, how are we mate? Yes, fine and dandy, off work for at least a month, Just get to be free, do what you want, I mean, aye, it's no raining, it's a good free. day. Good ass. Aye. Oh, you're like you were like the start of bloody uh, fat boy slim there. We want to be free and we want to get loaded and have a good time. Fat was fat boy slim, wasn't it? No, no, it was primal scream. Don't be Gillespie. <laughs> Aye, primal scream. It is early in the morning, so forgive me, people. <laughs> um, as I said, episode twenty, series three, mate. This was preconceived pick of myself, wasn't it? That's my pick, aye. Ah, sure, aye. Aye, and I picked the 1999 10 out of 10, I'm saying it out here already. Aye. Uh, the Green Mile, mate. Aye. Aye. <laughs> it's, it's like, like I was, before we started, it's just, I try maybe watch it once a year. Once a year's enough. Because. Mm-hmm. It's all, it's just one that gets me for some reason. Even when I was younger and all that, know what I mean? Didn't understand it and I'm still going <laughs> You've the lad on there to dark balls. Uh, remember we do impressions with ad lib. We are not taking the piss out of anybody where they come from, their creed, their colour or anything like that. Um but people that have been watching this for a a wee while will know that anyway. It's just to convey the content that we that we've watched and we have a laugh with. Because I like doing impressions. I do impressions everybody. I do impressions of my, my Wayne's teachers and everything. Do you know what I mean? <laughs> um, so, if, you're, if you're watching Mrs. Robertson. <laughs> that's no her name. I'm no out now. I know. That's why I just said Robertson. <laughs> uh, you've just remembered one of your teachers there, haven't you? Uh, no. No, no, no. Sorry, I remember yeah. all my teachers. Okay. They're all on a list. <laughs> Better than Mrs. You failed Robinson. me! You failed me! <laughs> Mass! Do you hear me looking at you? <laughs> so, this was uh, directed by Frank Darabont. Um, or as I say in France, Darabont. Oh, Darabont. Um, <laughs> and obviously, it's a book, and it was screenplay written by Stephen King, mate. Who's worth a watching, in my opinion, that boy. <laughs> Aye, I mean these these stories come from experience, don't they? But I, Frank Darabont, mate, the guy is a is a treasure to humanity. You know what I mean? Yes. It's it obviously does this done Shawshank Redemption and stuff, but if people that were fans of the Walking Dead series, he was the showrunner. For the good times, shall we say? Before it, it went off the rails. <laughs> Up to series seven or eight, wasn't it? Aye. I'll Sorry. tell you, man, see the rest of it. What an absolute slog. <laughs> it was fucking garbage till the end of it. Aye. So it's put me right after spin offs. I know they're out. I just mm. couldn't get monkeys. Aye. About Daryl or fucking MDL, you know what I mean? Or Michonne Aye. cutting about my sword. Aye. Well, see, that was uh, that would have been interesting because that that was supposed to be a film, Michonne and Rick, true. and then they've just made it a series. So it's just, it's just uh, no going to be. It went from being a three-hour film to trilogy to now a series. Do you know Aye. what I mean? 
Ah, fuck off. Can't be asked for that shite. <laughs> so you're a swearing started already. Um, so, cast list in this film, mate. It's The Great and the Good in 1999. Um, Tom Hanks, David Morse, Bonnie Hunt, Michael Clark Duncan, James Cromwell, Michael Jetter, Graham Greene, Luke Hutchinson, Sam Rockwell, Barry Pepper, Jeffrey McMunn, Patricia Clarkson, Harry Dean Stanton. I think I've covered all the bases there, apart from the, the vast chasm of extras in the prison yard <laughs> at the start. <laughs> aye. aye, and what a cast, by the way. Aye, it? Well, aye. It's so good. Mate, it's, and it's... you can obviously see the links between like, like Pepper and Hanks, like, aye. Saving Private Ryan and all that, do you know what I mean? Shawshank Redemption as well, you've got the twins' father, he was in the prison with Andy Dufresne. And yep. That's just, it's great, mate. Aye. 1999, do you know what I mean? Plus, 20. Again, oh, who man. is it? Is it Je- Jeffrey D- Damon, or whatever his name is? He was also in Walking Dead. Walking Dead, you're right. No. Aye. That's just such a, a brilliant cast. Now, it was released on the 10th of December 1999, as I said there, just before the millennium. And I want to point out before we get into the film what what happened right that for me personally. And it's a it's a cast back to how better it was back then when you went to the cinema, no really knowing. Do you know what I mean? Internet yeah. wasn't as prevalent. We weren't getting blasted with trailers, second trailers and final trailers. <laughs> so I went into this film. I remember it well, man. What was I twenty twenty one? Twenty one year old. Just it's a Tom Hanks film, so I'm going to see it. The big man's in death row. Oh, what's happening? She don't know. Yeah. And it was just it was the quickest three about hours I've ever spent in a cinema. I was greeting. At points I was laughing. At points I was like, what the fuck? Where did that come from? Whoa, whoa, whoa. Hey, what's this? It was just, it fuck, it hurt you for every angle. Do you know what I mean? And that was the, the best thing about it. It's a hang a hink we're, we're sadly missing the day. When you kind of go to the pictures again, that's... that is the cinema, American people. <laughs> <laughs> and you're basically getting the rest of the film around the good bits that you've already seen. Aye. You know Aye, tra- trailers are short films now. Genuinely. And it's like everything. Like everything's in it. Apart from... Like in most cases now, it's like, just say Marvel films now. You're seeing all the action parts. The, the parts you don't see are just the fan service, the wee Easter egg bits and all that. And that's the only thing it is in the end trailers now. You're like, ah. <laughs> oh, I don't need to go and see this now. <laughs> right. And on top of that, there are actually events now. There's countdowns to trailers coming out. Huh? And there's personal screenings of these two in about minutes. And you're like, what? <laughs> and I, it's just, it's a thing that's sadly lost, you know what I mean? Because um, I didn't have an, an absolute clue about the spiritual aspect of this and the wider kind of human mm-hmm. fucking aspect of it as well. But, but we'll get into it, mate. Uh, so what age were you in 1999? You were eight? Uh, seven, maybe. Seven? Possibly just turned eight. Or possibly did just turned seven. Kinda, <laughs> at the time, or did you see it kind of late on? I'm sure it was videotape. So it would have been after it came out, the pictures and stuff, know what I mean? Videotape <laughs> on the VHS. Yes, the Live VHS. The BBC. <laughs> uh, it was only about the time I had to take my Hot Wheels out of the video player, because that's what I kept them. <laughs> that was the garage, <laughs> know what I mean? <laughs> Aye. And it was a good year for film and all, because American Pie came out that year as well, and there was an all host of things that I wrote down and deleted by mistake. So sorry about that. <laughs> um, as a... A move as a as a money maker anyway. It was sixty million was the budget, and a big chunk of that was the cast, and it only made back two hundred eighty seven. So, and what I've been reading, it's been considered a successful failure. The film, ah, it's mental, mate. It's because even I know, even like watching this, I was like, I hadn't really considered what I was. It had won. It was nominated for four Oscars and won zero. And I'm like, ah, how is that even possible, man? Look. Aye. It's mental. <laughs> it's just it's mental. the whole... Just... Uh, uh, the whole actor and everything in it. See, the, the story, the writing, everything. And I'm like, ah, this, this didn't win anything. 
I don't think it was in the running for best picture. You know what I mean? No. No. That's why I wrote down the other films that I forgot to. <laughs> I'd like to be a mistake to see who who his competition was, but I'm sure people that are listening are tuning in will tell us anyway. So, in case you've not seen this, in case you are an absolute specimen, a gonk, right? The Green Mile is a 1989 American fantasy drama film, written and directed by Frank Darabont, and based on Stephen King's 1996 novel, as we said, right? So, Paul is a head guard of a prison. He meets an inmate, John, an African American who is accused of murdering two little girls. But his life has drastically changed when he discovers that John has a special gift. That's it, yeah. Mm-hmm. I don't even remember that being said in the synopsis before I went to see it, about the special gift and all that. Mm-hmm. Um, it's just oh, something else, man. Aye. Something else. So, the setting of depression into it, 1935. Aye, um, <laughs> things are depressing. <laughs> yeah, you know depressing. Mean? And for the yeah. larger part, although it's no been written as, as such, the prison itself seems to be a prison for for ethnics, doesn't it? I mean, yeah. the full yard, the full people out working under guard are all, they're black. Mm-hmm. And then the actual people on death row themselves, John's black, uh, Delacroix's French, mm-hmm. and Billy Buck is uh, Indian, chief red yeah. Indian, isn't he? Uh, so it's only Mad Bill that comes in. It's and he's just he's just a problem child. You know what I mean? <laughs> he's just who's uh, yeah, played by uh, is it Sam Rockwell? He's Sam he's Rockwell. won he's won Oscars after this, isn't he? I'm sure he's won stuff after this. Aye. I can only really remember him for Iron Man Two. Aye. Uh, oh, I think he won. He might have won something. In, is it three billboards outside Missouri or something? Whatever the fucking film was called. <laughs> aye, so <sorry. laughs> but I like he says. I think that going by the accents, I reckon this is done in the deep south of America somewhere. Not I mean, I don't think it's really said where it is, but as you can imagine, what was happening down there in the times. Not I mean, <laughs> oh, <laughs> so definitely. Well, <laughs> the, the cornbread's a big staple down there, so. Aye. And that's mentioned a few times, but it's Cold Mountain Penitentiary. And you're right, mate, as a deep south, that every time I watch this, it makes me feel pure sweating. Because <laughs> everybody in it's pure sweating, isn't it? Aye. <laughs> this is where the hand pocket in it came into use. Just like I just start wiping the neck down. Why do they always wipe the neck? I don't get that. No. I know. <laughs> Especially as baldies. I can. I've written streaming out the tap your head and oh there. Give me a glass of lemonade there on the porch. Oh fuck's sake. But see that she is a film night, mate. It starts in the present day and it's Paul is in a retirement home, obviously, and uh, he starts telling the story to his wee pal. His wee his new his new squeeze. <laughs> the new young <laughs> thing at eighty four. <laughs> I like that. I thought it was great. Aye. A, a way to kind of like, break you into the story, sort of thing. Mm-hmm. That, again, I like films that I see like, that are, it kind of it's like a, it starts like a narration, sort of thing, and then it shows Aye. you the story, like you're being told the whole story, sort of thing. I like films like that. You know what I mean? Aye. That's how see when the end comes and everything's just like kind of finished up. Like mm-hmm. Stand by Me's done the exact same way. You know what I mean? Aye, true. Like that. Just save it, Private Ryan. I know. Aye. Quality man. Again, and storytelling within storytelling. <laughs> and see the, the elder actor whose name escapes me out of all the names that plays Paul. I think he's great. Because he gets some of the best dialogue in the film. Aye, aye, a couple of his lines are definitely. Well, one of the ones he says at the end is my favourite anyway. But apparently they were going to get Tom Hanks to play. Old up all, but I decided nah. But see that actor, I think he's something Greer. I think his name is. He was actually suffering for ill health, so they filmed a lot of the film around his what like, ill health sort of thing. And then when he was fine enough to do his lines and all that, they filmed his bits of the film. Oh, nice man, 
Well, he'd done a fucking sterling job. Right. Um, and as I said, and as you said, his, his summary dialogue is brilliant because he opens it brilliantly. And uh, basically, Paul's a, a security guard during the Depression, 1935. He's got the worst bladder urinary infection of his life because it just starts when it goes back. It's just him trying to piss in it. Aye. And do you know, hats off to Tom Hanks, right? He's got Oscars, he's got cabinets full of awards. He's done magic roles, but I've never had somebody make me wince the way he does when he's Aye. trying to piss. Aye. Aye, he's he's definitely captured trying to piss a broken bottle. Know what I mean? He's captured it perfectly. <laughs> it's just... I always remember thinking, I never want that. <laughs> that looks so... I never want that. <laughs> oh, no, my wee bub. Aye. <laughs> Where have you been putting that thing, you dirty bastard, you? <laughs> aye, but I, I mean, what I was going to say, you know, like, see, even though Tom Hanks is in this and his acting's brilliant, a lot of the acting in it is brilliant. But I wouldn't say he's the main takeaway for it, know what I mean? Oh, his, his acting is the best in it, it's obviously the big fella. I no, not at all. And, uh, I hate the wee bastard plays Percy. I hate him. Hate him Aye. with a passion. And that's just kudos to him as an actor. Aye. Smarmy, sleek it. Ugh. <laughs> wee guy, <eye>, man. <laughs> I see, I just thought about Percy at all. See the, the two bad guys in this? They're just, they're brilliant. Because they're just so different, know what I mean? He's a wee conniving, sneaky rat face bastard, know what I mean? Whereas Wild Bill is just a total lunatic, know what I mean? He's just dialed to 11 Aye. on every spectrum, and he's just mental, man. Aye, just so, a product of the times, I'd reckon, isn't it? Just... That's it. But again, see as much as this movie is it's heartfelt, it's emotional, it makes you feel sad, there's just smatterings a comedy through it and there's some cracking wine liners not that and, <laughs> I mean even at the start right when they get John into the cell and Brutal what a name Brutal uh, hey Bruno <laughs> he says you might maybe want to think about getting in the cell with this one John uh, Paul he goes like he's enormous <laughs> <laughs> and then when he gets him in says his hellos like shuts the gate they get into the office and Paul says to him Okay, I want to hear everything about this guy, apart from how goddamn big he is. And Brutal just goes, Mars is big. <laughs> Aye. There is, you're right, mate. There is a bit of fun about it in places. No, I mean, in the in the, di- uh, the the dialogue of the film, but I, even although the character Wild Bin, uh, Bill is fucking, you just hate the guy, you know what I mean? Because obviously you find out what he does later, but. Just see that the V sequence on bamming up the guards. It's just hilarious, man. <laughs> Aye. <laughs> he just starts pissing on one of the guards. <laughs> what the hell? Some bitch pissed on me. Uh-huh. Uh-huh. Currently cooking up some turds. Aye. Have them out by tomorrow. <laughs> it's just class on it. Um... Mate, just that moon pie bit, I know, man. Know what I mean? Just, oh, you're big Brutus, man. I'm just, oh, mate, it was just, that sequence is, aye, f- funny. Although he's a horrible, but in saying that, I think his character is the only one that could give you the, the f- comedic side of things. Know what I mean? Mm-hmm. In that way, just like kind of it. slapstick. Aye, just because he doesn't care. Because see, after the whole moon pie thing, and then they get him into the quiet room, and they lock the door, and Paul just turns to Brutal and goes like that. Go to give him it. That was original with the moon pie. <laughs> Do you know what I mean? So if that's not happened before. He's his mate. <laughs> See the bit he's getting dragged in. He's getting dragged into the quiet room in the beginning, and he starts uh, uh, on his taking a seizure. And he's like, nah, he'll be fine. And you go, you bastard. <laughs> I've seen that before. Uh-huh. Uh, aye, because even the, the whole introduction to Wild Bill, he's that crafty. That when the guards go to collect him from Briar Ridge, which is the mental hospital, 
he's got it all planned and he's just thought, well, uh, we don't know either. We, we as an audience seen it for the first time, he's stunned at the windy. Aye. <laughs> I think he's drugged up, not I mean. And I, I wonder if it, he's just like a different like class of criminal again. Know what I mean? That in the times that was not because let's see for the most people that are in like the death row part. See the other two prisoners? Like, they seem, they don't seem like bad people. Know what I mean? Whatever they've done might have just been like an accident or just like a circumstances, a, a situation. Know what I mean? It's obviously terrible things. However, they've, uh, they've totally repented, haven't they? Aye. Their own death row, they've accepted what's going to happen and they're just inmates now. Aye. The, the whole thing as well, which is a thing I never even with a thought about uh, what Percy sees that, that Bruto and Paul mollycoddle them and then mm. Paul explains to it and says no, nah, these guys are wound up they're stressed out or not just talk to them mate, you know what I mean why would you want to make the situation even more uh -huh. hellish for them do you know what I mean brilliant I, man see, I think that I never really thought about either like, see the guys doing that job how horrific must that be? Know what I mean? You're in there every day. Whether they're horrible people or no, you'll get to know them sort of thing. Of course you And did. then it comes one day where you have to put the lights out sort of thing. Know what I mean? Aye. Just... It's all right. <laughs> so what's, uh, what's some of your favourite scenes in it then? <laughs> Oh, I always say something controversial here. <laughs> well, I've All got right. two favourite scenes right, that stand out, right? Keep it's... talking, just go shut his door. I've got, well, I've got three, sorry. Um, The first one is when all the guards first see, like, Kofi's miracle. See with the mouse, uh -huh. he brings it back. And it's just, see, just the gravitas of the whole set, like, scene. All these guards are all just like, oh my god, this guy is like a miracle, sort of thing, right? <laughs> the second one, right? Just because of the, the dialogue in it, and it's like, obviously, the lines that come for it is when Coffee is going to be executed, and it's Paul talking to him in his cell, and he's like, when in Judgment Day comes, how do I stand before God and say I killed one of his miracles? So just see the acting in that scene and the dialogue, again, brilliant. But... <laughs> you can see the, the anguish in Paul's face, man. Aye. <laughs> Tell me what today, John. Aye. Do you know what I mean? And it's... just on the day of my judgment, when I stand before God and he asks me, why did I kill one of his true miracles? What am I going to say? It was my job. And then Coffee comes back with his big mad line and his big best bit of dialogue, this guy that hardly says boot a goose. He just says, You tell God the Father it was a kindness you done. I know you're hurting and worrying. I can feel it on you. But you gotta quit it now because I want it over and done. I do. I'm tired, boss. Tired of being on the road. Lonely as a sparrow in the rain. Tired of not ever having me a buddy with me or tell me where we's coming from going to and why but most of this best bit man he says mostly i'm tired of people being ugly to each other i'm tired of all the pain i feel in here in the world every day there's too much of it it's like pieces of glass in my head can you understand <laughs> and he just says yes john i think i can man aye so it's see just that aye wrenching. that's I, it just gets you right in the feels. Know what I mean? To, totes the mosh, as the Wayne say. <laughs> yeah, that's what I like with you, man. I, gets you right in the feels. I, you know? hash, hashtag blessed. <laughs> um, hashtag love, live life. <laughs> live life, love. But, <laughs> and then obviously, third favourite scene, although it is, again, totes the mosh. Wrecks you emotionally and all that. I can't but, see. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> you're a 12 year old girl, I've got Twitter in my head there. <laughs> it feels that like Twitter in my head. 
<laughs> it is that same way. <laughs> but it's uh, hang me. It's John Coffey getting uh, executed again because of the the acting and all that. It's just you know what I mean. Well, Tom Hanks's character. You see him tearing up, and he can't do it and all this stuff. You know what I mean? They're supposed to be the the professionals. The the witnesses and all that. They are they. They're still with the opinion that Coffee's a mad child killer. You know what I mean? But these guys know different. You know what I mean? So everything just sets up, and it's I quality man. But obviously, see Barry Pepper. <laughs> yeah, you're him. gonna say that. And that, I'm like, ah, that's real. He's fucking. He can't handle this, man. <laughs> Snorters and everything. It's fucking. Ah, oh, I'm just thinking about it again, man. I'm, I'm hurting, man. Oh, <laughs> uh, I mean, but they, they, just they because they, she's. I just I, something else, man. I think it's me. I don't need to just see the acting in it. The acting's just superb. Aye, as it's probably. Uh, so some of my favourite bits in it. <clears throat> Honestly, choose for man. Even the whole, the first time Percy sees Mister Jingles. <laughs> so he's on with the two older guards, and well, I bet son of a gun. I didn't hardly believe him. Percy's combing his hair, and just turns around, and looks at it. So they start feeding him and all that. Give it some space, Percy. Yeah. You just see Percy's hot all the time, <laughs> fucking reaching towards his baton. And then he just fucking launches the baton and goes like a crazy person. Oh, and lifts the bin. <laughs> it's like a Tom and Jerry cartoon. <laughs> Try to stamp this wee mouse and lifting the bin and all that. And then obviously, Mr. Jingles runs into the quiet room. But this time, Paul and Brutal have turned up. What the hell's going on? And he's getting the stuff out of the quiet room, which took them ages the night before, and he's like, oh, all right, right. you go on yourself, get yourself <laughs> out, hope you squish a little bastard. <laughs> oh, oh, wait, bro, wait, man. Aye. The other uh, couple of favourite scenes, obviously the same as yours, there's that many to pick for Aye, heart-wrenching ones as well. I mean, the actual execution, Adele, is you can almost smell it yourself, man. Ah, it's brutal, that, it? <laughs> it just portrays Percy as a wicked, you know what I mean, fucking hamster killing wee bastard that doesn't wet the sponge. So he basically Dale's getting cooked for the inside out to death. The whole blue flame coming out the eyes and the hood melted into his face and that's horrific. Do you know what I mean? But I've got a question. See the wee guy right behind the wee guy that throws the switch? Who's his deal? Aye. He's a creepy bastard. <laughs> Aye. He goes everywhere wearing leather gloves, doesn't he? <laughs> and isn't he? And he, even when he's, he's teaching him in the practice run uh, to Percy and he goes, uh, moves the horn, he goes, that's it. <laughs> it's a, I love my job. He's probably still the other now, just behind that wee thing, just waiting. Oh, see, ah. and again, after watching this again, right, I was kind of thinking myself, right, these prisoners are on death row, right? Most likely mm-hmm. for murder. So, see these guards and doing this job? <laughs> are, are they then murderers? That's, a, that's semantics in it. They're employed by the state <laughs> to carry out the letter of the law. So they're only doing the finality of what society has deemed mm-hmm. the right punishment at that time in that era. I know what you mean, but Aye. they might, like you said earlier on, how would they feel? How would you feel doing that job? You might feel like a murderer. How could you go home and turn back into parent mode, turn it back into daddy mode or husband <laughs> mode? And, have you cut the grass today? So you have your bastard. I'll, I'll kill it. No. <laughs> right, right. right. That's, that's that's the other place. <laughs> oh, I know. Listen, you, you might go home and see a sink full of dishes and just lose a plot, man. <laughs> I mean, I just cooked 
a, a decent guy in a day. And you, cow, you can't cook me totties and a bit of mince. Oh. Fucking there. <laughs> oh, my God, man. Just but... behave and volley the dog back candy your way <laughs> across the couch and all that for no reason. Did... Oh. I'm sorry, Dad. What did you What did you say to your father? I just said, hello, Daddy. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but I'm talking about execution, right? Just see the, the electrical chair. Is that a method that should have been used? Aye. You think? No. I thought just lethal injection would have been easier. In this day and age, it probably would be. And listen, if that was... If that, <clears throat> I'm going to go a wee tad political here and just put my... Nail my colours to the mast. If it was to come back today, which I believe in certain circumstances, capital punishment is extremely necessary for certain people and certain crimes, then it would be lethal injection, and that's fine with me. I don't need to go and see a hanging in public. I don't need to go and see an, an ex uh, electrocution. But back in that day, these characters are portrayed, apart from Will Powell, obviously, is to have repented and they've been humanised, I suppose. Mm. And by no telling you their exact crime as well, that's got a lot to do with it. But Aye. I would imagine back in the day and the Depression and some horrible, horrible people out there. See if I would, put it this way, see if I was uh, the father of two wee girls and I thought that he'd done it, I would mm. want to go and see it. So Aye. I think it's mere for the public and eye for an eye and... Aye. Don't do this, so this is what happens to you. But if it's well, done right, then uh, I'd imagine uh, the electrician, uh, electrician, electrocution only lasts about 30 seconds. Then <laughs> I wouldn't like to be well, tested this is to thing, find yeah. it. The electric chair will never come back, mate. No. <laughs> do you know how much that bastard burns? <laughs> <laughs> Fucking uh, Del Club that. just cost me fucking five grand in the lecky bill. <laughs> uh, you wouldn't get that in Great Britain today with the price hikes and energy bills, man. I, we're going to need a solar power to be the size of fucking France. To... I, or two guards, oh. either side of the chair, on bicycles that are wired up, you need to generate your own power. I, the guy like, are you did yet? No, I'm starting to feel a bit tingle in my fingers, but he did, Doctor. No, but his phone's fully charged. Let's keep going. <laughs> so I, I, I could, I can only imagine what it'd be like to. If you well, there you go. If you had two choices and you were to be killed, what would you rather be hung or electrocuted? That was hung. only two you had offered. Nothing else. Hung. No fire squad. Nay lethal injection, nay magic pill. It was only that. Definitely hung. Hmm. Aye. Because right. see what most people don't realise, see majority of times when people get hung, see their body weight snaps their neck. That's right. No, I mean, sure and all, isn't it? Aye. Aye, for a wee, like that. But you see, see with the, the first time, the, the first time you see an execution, the wee doctor comes there and goes, no, no, no. He's only a Judas sale, but <laughs> this isn't <a> deep. <laughs> Isa, tell him aye, he's deep. Was... <laughs> That's right, Billy Buck, wasn't it? He was the first aye. one to go, Chief. I mean, and again, after the humanity of Brutal and Paul, after the execution, the dead bodies lying in the morgue underneath the prison, and Percy can't help himself. Adios, Chief. I hope you burn in hell. And aye. Brutal just comes there and fucking grabs Percy, goes like, how you? He's paid his debt. He's square with the house again, you know what I mean? Because nah. it is, as you say, but really the fact that it's deep south, they're all God fearing. Do you know what I mean? Mm -hmm. And that's him. He's paid his debt. You know what I mean? Yep. Aye. But have you got a, a character you like more than any of the rest of them? Eh. Uh, no. As you said, Hanks is probably the biggest earner in this. Eh. Uh, Coffee probably comes across as a most endearing. <laughs> but I just, like you said at the very start, I think everybody in their own part lends to each other. Because I could say one day, I think Wild Bill 
is tremendous character. Uh, Percy mm. is... They're all, no, I've not got a favourite at all. I think the whole story has been written so brilliantly that everybody's got equal pie in it, you know what I mean? Yeah. So about you? You like Big John, didn't you? Oh, I like Big uh, Brutus. Aye, aye. aye I like him or not. Aye. <laughs> I just like the the way the man carries himself, you know what I mean? He's just like, this is the job. Be decent. This got on me. This no be arseholes. Let's move on with life, you know what I mean? And then even see the final scene when they're obviously doing in Big John. He's standing there holding it back, you know what I mean? Try to be. (laughs) You're laughing because I went, Big John! Big John! (laughs) They're doing him in. Big John's got (laughs) shoe. I don't know if it's just because I, <laughs> I don't know if it's because I like that actor at all, but you know what I mean? But out of all the characters, I think he's you know what I mean, does his duty, you know what I mean? Even when it's soon it comes nice. to Delacroix and he's thinking about the mouse and all that and he tells him a wee made up lie. And I think Delacroix knows it's a lie and all, but it's just to but, aye, come on. You know what I mean? I bet the whole that's... That was great. That, mate, you're right. About having Paul just ad libbing, like, half one another to make this mouse city and mouse fill, and, and then they get people in the prison, ties and all that, on to make a display a couple of days before Dell's okay. execution, so he can go and. These are guys for the, the government, the state. They want to see Mr. Jingles. They're going to take him to Mouse City and all that. And even if he does believe it for half a second, it's magical. No. That two people would do that. Because no, you could. See, I, I would imagine this day and age there's very few people like that. And, well, we know there isn't in other sectors of work, but in a prison, kind of hard if you're reading a back file. Because, well, let's, let's face it, most of them are what, what's said that they've done. It's no John Coffey, no everything's a movie, you know what I mean? But, aye. aye. Can I see the bit of an hour where John's. Cradling the two wee lasses, screaming. I couldn't, I couldn't, I couldn't take it back on that because you don't understand what yep. you're talking about. You just instantly think, "I'm sorry, I raped and murdered him." I, I couldn't help it. I wish I could take it back. I think he's just a big dummy. Do you know what I mean? Yep. And you're, oh, that's heart wrenching as well, Aye. especially after watching it a couple of times and every time you see it, you know, you're like, "It wasn't him, man! It wasn't him." Exactly. I that, that's the whole thing as well because they kind of keep that like secret as well. They don't reveal it to you if he has done it or not. Know what I mean? Aye. It's and you really don't get that until he shows Paul be touching him, sort of thing. Know what I mean? But the whole time you're like, ah, is he? Is he no? And then it's it's kind of hot home with the is it Gary Sinus has seen, and he's like, ah. sometimes like. Yeah, you've had that dog for years, and then one day it just goes bad. You know what I mean? Aye. And you're like, that was a great, that, that, was that a, is the case. A, a brilliant skit with him in it, man. As I, I like, I, he's a brilliant actor, Gary Sassini. Uh, although you beat me to it because I was going, <laughs> I was going to introduce him as Lieutenant Dan. <laughs> Lieutenant Dan, you got new legs. <clears throat> I was just, I was just, I, I was a thing I kind of noticed again there was they don't actually tell you if he was innocent or no, right up to near the end, you know what I mean? And you're like, oh fuck. But I remember, mate, in the pictures, I remember before that reveal, I'd made my mind up that John hadn't done it. He's got this gift uh, and he's been trying to, because you know about the gift and all that by this time, but I didn't even think it was going to be Bill. Never had a, never thought about it. I thought it was just going to be some mad passer through or vagrant or bad bastard. But Aye. then you're like, Jesus, fucking Aye. hell, man! And then the whole backstory, of, like Calgin and work and feeding them, and you're like, mm-hmm. oh, you're, it's funny as Bill was up to that point. You're like, oh, oh my god, you fucking evil bastard! Do you know what I mean? Yep. Oh, Aye. that's. Bastard. <laughs> Aye. We see some of the, like, the, the camera angles and stuff and like production and all that. See, to make uh, 
Michael Douglas cut Clark look massive. You know what I mean? Because apparently he was the same height as uh, Brutus oh. in the film. You know what Aye. I mean? And I think, is it the governor or something? Or the prison? Uh, the pr- he's actually taller than him. So he had to, like, camera angles and stuff. But even, like, see in his cell, they built his bed smaller than normal beds. You know what I mean? That's right. It make him look massive. <laughs> That's like, that brilliant, man. Aye, it's absolutely brilliant. See the other bit you talk about cinematography, cameras and stuff like that, and effects. Obviously, there's not a lot of need for CGI in this. I don't think there is any, to be honest with you, but see when they're doing the practice runs mm-hmm. and they get to the chair, and then it always ends on the morphing between the hall getting cleared and the people arriving. Uh, That's simple, but smashing. Do you mm-hmm. know what I mean? Aye. Real old Batman. Because that, that's another brilliant part in it. Let's see near the end, obviously when the film's kind of winding down. Mm-hmm. It's old Paul. And it transitions from being a young guy walking down the Green Mile to he's in this home he's living in now, which is just another Green Mile. <laughs> you know what I mean? And it's just telling you, we're all making this walk to death, people. You know what I mean? <laughs> Aye. That was uh, tremendous. You might not know it, but you're taking your walk and all, you know what I mean? It's, uh, you're right, mate. Absolutely <laughs> tremendous. You mentioned the warden there, right? <clears throat> Excuse me. He's played by James Cromwell, who I've never seen any younger than Aye. the age he is in this film or any other film he's ever done. Wait. Dude, you said that. I've never seen him young either. Early Confidential. Babe. He's just the <laughs> same guy. What? AI. He's an AI and all. Aye. He's just... If it, he just gets older. <laughs> What's this? Paul Rudd has stole his youth. <laughs> <laughs> Aye. Paul Rudd's getting into people's rooms at night and just <laughs> suck the youth out their ears. <laughs> Sleep. <laughs> Sleep, my pretty. Uh, just a wee straw right into their face. The <laughs> Wake up, look me every morning for work on. Fucking, that look hellish, by the way. I've left that window to my bastard Rudd's been in. <laughs> what did I tell oh, you? Man. Shut oh, that window. <laughs> the local community out there chasing Paul Rudd with a big butterfly net. Where are you, you bastard? <laughs> Paul Rudd, the Sandman. You know what I mean? <laughs> but, eh, uh, so James Cromwell was about a million years old in real life, I know, right? But they've got Patricia Clarkson to play his wife, Melinda. And she was Elliot Ness's wife, wasn't she? And Dutch yeah. that we done a couple of weeks ago. I'm like, oh, fucking... Fucking some age difference there. <laughs> I know she looks hellish with the, the brain tumour and that, because between the visit of Paul and his wife to go and see her, and then by the time John gets to her, she's lying in that bed like a fucking skeleton at a Masters <laughs> of the Universe, isn't she? <laughs> <laughs> if her eyes were any mere sunk in the back of her head, uh, they'd be looking at the back of her head. Aye. But, oh my God, big man, Paul Rudd got you. But he's been at her for about half an hour. <laughs> uh, you've just missed him. He's j- You've literally just missed him. He was here a bit longer than usual, right enough. <laughs> uh-huh. I've got pure... Pictures of my head. <laughs> People just looked at the windows and seen Paul Rudd 100 yards down the street turning back going <laughs> <laughs> All made up with kind of 1800 gear See, Victorian reason, times <laughs> I, I've got them wearing wee bell shoes and all <laughs> I rumpo stilts get out of Shrek <laughs> But it's Paul Rudd's... I need to make that up later on my Pixar. <laughs> I need to morph the face of Paul Rudd, don't you? Rumble still later. <laughs> Jesus, Brilliant, man. man. Oh. Oh. So, a wee special mention and off of me for Harry Dean Stanton, who plays to Mate, <laughs> see that guy? He's been in so many films. It's like, embarrassing how many he's in. It's just amazing. Obviously, he's in this, tunnels, isn't he? Aye, Escape from New York, uh, Alien. He was in the Avengers, the first Avengers film, just right through history, man. Aye, oh. That's right, he's, he's a wee security guard, isn't he? When 
Uh, Aye. Bruce, falls Aye. through the sky. Aye, he's uh, up there. <laughs> Are you an alien? You better go and see a doctor, son. You've got a condition. <laughs> he's the wee trusty in this that they, they take back and forth in the practice runs, isn't he, mate? Aye, 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 he's sort of my house, man, isn't he? The wee, just making a mockery of the execution, isn't it? <laughs> I want fat chicken and gravy on my taters. And I want, I want Big May West to sit in my face because I'm one horny motherfucker. <laughs> <laughs> and they all start laughing. Oh. Even Paul doesn't know, but then he realizes fucking stuff. Uh-huh. Aye. It was it was pretty funny, yeah, and that's why I don't like it. You ever stop trying to think of something funny in church? Same goddamn thing. <laughs> <laughs> and he just says to now, now Toot, you play the game here, son. I'm gonna go roll on two for real. And Toot's wee face goes, <laughs> comes like a mogwai. <laughs> oh, bro, fucking baby grogu face. I know. No fooling, Mister. <laughs> Michael oh. Jetter that plays Delacroix, he's been in a lot of stuff, I know, hasn't he? Aye, mate, aye. <laughs> it's probably not his best work, mate, but I always remember him for Jurassic Park 3. That's <laughs> just, you know what I mean? This is my last, this and Jurassic Park aye. 3, he's been in a whole host of things. He gets didn't he, man? Aye. He gets chowed. Aye. Munch the boy. <laughs> Michael oh. Clark Duncan, I forgot he, I know he passed away. Uh, but, but how did they pass away again? I forget. Uh, they had a heart attack. Did they? I think he, aye. Heart attack, and I'm sure he died. I think he might have been 54 or something, I'm not sure, but... 2012 he passed away, man. Aye. I thought it would have been... I thought it was closer than that, man. Aye. Aye. It's... It was a weird one, mate. Weird. But he is a, a big guy, you know what I mean? That was just aye. straight on the heart level, but... Aye. Oh, he's, he's the dog's dangle he's in this. And considering the only thing he was in before this was what, Armageddon or something. So Armageddon. It was Bruce Willis that actually got in the park in this film. Aye. And Allegedly. <laughs> if, this, if this film couldn't get any sadder, right? Obviously, I was reading back on all this to find the root stuff. Yada, 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 right? See, when it came to the emotional scenes, the big man thought back to when his dad walked out of home when he was five. And I'm like, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> oh, my hair. It's fucking rusted. I know. I read that and all, mate. I was like, oh, for fuck's sake. Oh. You're still carrying that about you, big man. Jesus. Get over it. But, no, but aye, that's show you, mate. Aye, something else, man. See you acting in it. I don't think there's been a lot like, of. A film where I've had I've seen an actor have to be that emotional all the way through a film. I don't know if there's another one. You know what I mean? Oh, because it just makes you back to greet every time he talks. Nah. Do you know what I mean? And I think it gets worse after having seen it before because you know <laughs> what he's going through. And then, <laughs> I mean, let's look at the, the whole spiritual angle, right? The whole kind of religious side of things. God is good, God is wonderful, this guy's a miracle. Why would they give... See, that, that's always been a wrench for me about the spiritual side of this, because why would God gift somebody with, with that kind of power, that kind of healing power, but make him black in the deep South America during the Depression, know the brightest tool in the box, no friends, just mm. make him fucking walk the land like Cain, you know what I mean? Aye. Why would the game such hard? Is, is that is that is that his plan? Is he got you've got to have this power, but everything else is just to be a fucking hardship for you? Because we see sometimes never it never divulges on it, but the scars on him, Aye. they're like, ah, well, where's he getting from? He's been he's been whipped or he's been slashed. And it yep. just looks like a big lost soul, and he doesn't want to feel what he feels every day because he can feel everything, can't he, man? Aye, if it was all the wrongs and the hurts and all that in the world. But, aye. What is it, what is it they say? God works in mysterious ways, mate. <laughs> and I have just... Obviously, it's, it's brilliant writing by Stephen King. It's absolutely fantastic, you know what I mean? Uh, but you're just like, well, why could they know just made him intelligent? 
Do you know what I mean? That enough to, I don't know, be a kind of profit or something like that. But again, <laughs> wouldn't have made up for a very good movie, I suppose. Aye, fair. Aye, it's, maybe it's to show you just the innocence, I know. know what I mean? Because it's stuff like that. But you're right, it's just, that's. I think that's what, see when him and Paul having that kind of conversation. And he says he doesn't want to, he wants death because he doesn't want to feel this way and all that anyway. I think it's more along see the, like that. I don't think you would get that if he spoke like, you know what I mean? An English gentleman. I say, Paul, all you ruffins are giving me a headache. You <laughs> know what I mean? Aye. But you talk about intelligence, because right? there's twice in it it's mentioned that he's confessed to raping and murdering the two wee girls. Mm. Twice he's confessed it. Obviously, you're like, ah, well, this has been under duress, you know what I mean? He's, but he's not even had. It wasn't me, it wasn't me. You're thinking he's never said that, or he wasn't given the opportunity because of his colour and where he was in the world at the time, you yeah. know what I mean? And obviously, caught red handed, although he wasn't, do you know mm. what I mean? But uh, the, the kind of brute. That's brutal, right? She can see the wee lashes' faces and the blood stained tear, right? That's brutal. After the, the executions, it gives you a right good long look at all the guys' faces, doesn't it? That have been executed. Uh-huh. Which is well done. Yeah. Uh, de- well, Delacroix's fucking burnt. He's no well done. He's... <laughs> <laughs> well, he is well done in a way. <laughs> Aye. But... Burnt well done, man. He's uh, <laughs> crispy as fuck. Yeah. <laughs> uh, but even just uh, when you see John at the end of not, it's just like big blistering scars on his head, but his eyes are still open to all that, and you're fucking hell, man. <laughs> aye. Aye, it's not the same, it's just aye. a light went out in the world, shall we say, isn't it? But aye. again, I, I think that's what helps lend it anyway, you know what I mean? Because it, it's, I don't, have you ever seen the film of Mice and Men? I've read the book. Aye, well, there's a following that. I'm, I'm sure it's oh John Malkovich and Gary Sneeze. <laughs> Gary Sneeze. <laughs> see every time. I know it must be the Gary Sneeze things. Just see every time somebody mentions John Malkovich, I just think about hater. <laughs> I am John Malkovich. Saying it to John Malkovich, and he's, I don't sound anything like that. Yes, you do. <laughs> <laughs> But it's a similar thing like that. The John Malkovich character is he's a bit slow, you know what I mean? And he gets to the stage like he doesn't he? Obviously you've read the book, you know what I mean? He ends up causing harm, you know what I mean? And it's I don't know if it's like a kind of play on that as well, you know what I mean? Well, as an endearing, I I suppose it's to endear us as an audience as well, because it works in this, it works in that, it works in the uh... Fucking Rain Man that works in Forrest Gump. Do you know right. what I mean? That's it. I mean, see that this time, right? As I, I was saying, I went to the pictures cinema uh, to see this just because Tom Hanks was in it. Because the vast body of work <laughs> that Tom Hanks has incorporated into the 1990s is it's just amazing. Do you know right. what I mean? Wait to see everything, wait to see this, wait to see. Save it, Private Ryan, uh, Forrest Gump, uh, what else? Apollo 13. Just everything they touched was blockbuster. Yeah. And I was so surprised when I, when I seen the box office for this. I thought, wow. But maybe that was just a lot of people not knowing what the fuck it was about. Yeah, true. True. But, aye. That, that's, that's me telling an audit. Just shows you how good uh, the big man was. That, we're talking about how brilliant he was, although Tom Hanks is good in it as well. He's better in the film. But as we've already said, everybody in it gives their own wee thing You know what I mean? So uh, the big man's chops as an actor as well, because like you said earlier, he was a big, muscly kind of dummy in fucking Armageddon. Yeah. Uh, and then to do that, to go to this... Acting chops, man, absolutely brilliant. Aye. it's actually it's angering that this wasn't nominated for Mayor. They never received an award. Anybody in this, especially him. Aye, 
because well, you kind of came for obscurity. I I was watch I was watching like extras on the Blu-ray about this and all that, and he says himself in an interview, he would have hung his sees his nomination for that film to get the best like picture. You know what I mean? I mean, because he felt like everybody deserved it. Because apparently, see the all the cast, they all wow. enjoyed their time together that much. You know what I mean? Apparently, Tom Hanks was greeting when Big Michael left set. You know what I mean? See after they finished filming. <laughs> What's that? Oh no, 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 the win. <laughs> That's right. I read that as well. Uh, also read that uh, he said the most uncomfortable scene was when the director asked him to fucking grab Tom Hanks' his boys. And he says, I couldn't do it. Couldn't do it. And it, it had to be Tom Hanks goes, ah, look, it's just a part. You're just playing a part. Just do it. Do you know what I mean? Aye. He said he still felt fucking horrible doing it, man. Aye. Aye, I think he went and got see, a, see an empty bottle or something. And I think he put it down his uh-huh. trousers. And that's what he was grabbing then. Okay. I mean? Aye. I've all done that. <laughs> need to do that go to dancing next time. <laughs> look at me and my spandex. Uh, Tom no, Hanks no. only done this film as a favour no. because he couldn't sync up calendars today <laughs> Shawshank, Tom Hanks was meant to be in Shawshank Redemption and he said to the director he says look I promise you'll, you can bring my next one right and he says aye hmm. and then Tom Hanks kind of read the script he said the three pages and he was like ah, I'm in man, fucking get me into this huh? um, you already said that Bruce Willis got the big in the part. And the other thing as well, Tom Hanks, did you read about Tom Hanks being in character every time he was on set? Aye. <laughs> I when Stephen King, King would come on set. Aye. <laughs> Aye. Can I sit in the chair? No. <laughs> no you I mean? cannot sit in the chair, you <laughs> fucking weirdo. <laughs> and uh, Stephen King thought he was kidding on. He was like, I, I said no. You cannot sit in Sparky. Do you know what I mean? Aye. Which is funny. Aye. And uh, there was a time that the, the mouse poos on Tom Hanks and all, and he really did poo on him. <laughs> Talk about the mice, too. I, I, I was reading different... Apparently, it was 30 mice, and then there was 15, but I've seen more that there was 15, and each Aye. mouse was trained to do different things. And again, you're like that. See, you just don't get that now. See, they would just... I just don't... Lab rat get... snack, you just don't get them. <laughs> they would just go, ah, uh, CGI that in. You know what I mean? It's just... That's true. And that's the reason that Mouseville folded, man. Do you know what I mean? So <laughs> highlight of people's summers in America got to Mouseville, Mouse City, and just ran out of money. Nobody was interested in America going to see the mouse staying the stuff and that, you know what I mean? <laughs> and that's when the mouse gang started. <laughs> I don't know, hanging oh. about in street corners with bags and all that. <laughs> that dude hanging about with rats and stuff. Aye. Bad influences. Aye, not what I mean. Storing getting mad with fucking squaring up to cats and all that. Man. <laughs> you big furry bastard. <sighs> oh. oh. <laughs> I know we were going to talk about what we'd seen the other day. We'll talk about how there was spiders are coming into the house because it's winter and all that stuff. And Chris, we what we went. I I usually get them in my house. See the ones with wee bodies and the big legs. And Paul went like, "That's funny. I've got, <laughs> I've got the ones with the big bodies and the wee legs." <laughs> oh, Welcome. Oh. Welcome to Planet Earth. On today's program, spiders. Oh. <laughs> Oh, it was funny, man. That's funny. You oh. get the big one with the wee legs. She's got the wee one with the big legs. I've got the human-looking one with the suit and the mask on. <laughs> I can oh. up the corner of my ceiling. Oh, what a what a time to be alive! But you know, you man. See when? Well, another one of my favourite lines of it is see when it's old Paul, and he's talking about. Well, he's telling his wee pal, like. The mouse is still alive and I'm still alive and all that. And he says, This is my atonement for letting John Coffey ride the lightning and all that, right? Do you think he's right in that sense? That it's his punishment? I 
can't see it as being anything else. He's been gifted, gifted, infected, as she puts it, mm. with life. But it comes, again, like John, it comes at a personal cost, doesn't it? And he says it, he says, I think Mr Jingles happened by accident. I think we, when we electrocuted Dell, when it went through so badly, John can feel that. And I think part of whatever magic was inside of him just kept through to my friend here. As for me, John had to give me part of himself, a gift as he saw it, so that I could see what, for myself what Wild Bill had done. So he couldn't have showed him without giving him it. And then he says, when John did that, when he took my hand, a part of the power that worked through him spilled into me. And that's when she says, what infected you with life and all that. And then the next big bit he says is fucking huge. I'm not even going to go through it, but you're right, mate. He just basically says, it's my atonement, it's my, my penance for making John Coffey ride the lightning. And I've seen everybody go, my boy, my wife, my friends, Brutal, Alan, Marlene, and, and, you, and then he's fucking pure Brutal, and he goes like that. And you, <laughs> you'll die and all. Then it, and it takes a sickle and cuts her head off like that. Yeah. <laughs> I know. It just but she's in this wee cabin and the woods got that. Oh, uh, <laughs> you can't see the blood on the red coats. <laughs> I know. Fucking thanks for that. Oh. Your story was gone smashing there. Until you just told me about my immortality. Oh. That's brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Just ah, uh, he can't get anything without paying the piper. You know what I mean? And. Uh. Even when he says, look, I'm di I'll die. I'm sure I'll die one day, but I don't know when. He says, I, I long for death. I long for it now. And then he says, but I've always asked myself when I lie there at night, if I can make a mouse live so long, how long am I going to be here? Yeah. But in, but I know that's how he's looking at it because he's seen people let go for his life and all this stuff, right? But as he, he looked at John Coffey as one of God's miracles, right? Huh? Is he now no a miracle himself for living so long? Aye. Aye, a medical miracle, definitely. For living, to be 108 years old and look in his, I'd say, 80s. Mm. There's no bad, eh? But, uh, yeah. Being a miracle and no having the power that John had as well, that's yeah, a bit shite. <laughs> <laughs> they gave him some of the power. They gave him all the power there. Uh, See that, right? See, and talking about the power. So obviously John takes away the ailment of whatever he's touching or healing, right? See that whole end bit where the warden's wife and he wouldn't cough it up. It's because Bill touched him before he went to do that, and that's when he's seen that it was Bill. Aye. We, again, don't know as an audience. Then he gets back to the cell, and that whole bit was just flawless, wasn't it? Aye. Aye. But as you said, the, the two, I punished those two bad men. You know what I mean? And it's like, what do you mean bad men? How did he do? You know what I mean? And again, it's like, what I say, assume you're watching the film. Let's see if you're watching it for the first time. You don't know if John Coffey has done what he's guilty. You know what I mean? Because it's never alluded to. You know what I mean? And even the guards themselves see every time he does something when he grabs Paul or he grabs Percy and all this. You still don't know that. Or oh, this is this is this murderous rage that's in him. You know what I mean? And then aye, but for Percy to get his comeuppance and Wild Bill, you know what I mean? You were like that. Aye. That's smashing that. <laughs> uh, it's, it's just it's tremendous. I can't say enough about it. He grabs Percy, obviously, as we know, mate. And then see the the badness, I call Aye. it. The kind of, don't know what it is. It, 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 it's leaving beasties or flies. It's, or, or, it's bad ash in it, man. Aye. Right into his mouth. And see, kudos to the actor, Percy's eyes going as if he is getting infected. Yep. So he gives him the brain tumour for the, the slightest amount of time, 
and obviously Percy shoots Wild Bill point blank and then gets jumped and then coughs it up again. But obviously John's left just enough in him to make him catatonic, isn't he? <laughs> aye, aye, because aye, it was transferring to like to go walk. Ah, rage. Aye, just so he could like I don't know, just fucking pester people with mental health issues and all that. Know what I mean? And you're just going like, just Probably. how evil are you, you wee bastard? Know what I mean? But mm-hmm. I assume it's also good about that, no? The whole person being the bad guy or the bravado and all that stuff, and then he, he gets grabbed by Wild Bull. Who is really a bad guy, you know what I mean? He thinks he's a wee bad guy, you know what I mean? And then it's just the tears and all that. It's just again, mate, see the acting, it's just superb. <laughs> see when Bill does all that and he's touching his crotch and kissed him on the cheek and oh, it smells pretty. <laughs> and he pushes himself, obviously. See when he lets him go because he's mocking Percy because Percy says, I'm just playing. And then he goes, Hey, I'm just. Playing, oh boy, you you're pretty. And then he goes, but smell you. Starts <laughs> like you and got pretty when... steam. <laughs> it pushes itself. And we we Delacroix's fucking loving it, man. So I'm I'm rooting for Delacroix here, man. Right. <laughs> uh, you got the right name there, Whitmore. <laughs> he's wet himself, <laughs> Whitmore. Uh, Percy Whitmore do a dance. See him squishing in his pants. <laughs> <laughs> oh. I, I just thought it was just seeing this again the contrast there. A wee guy that thinks he's tough, know what I mean? And he's met by an actual fucking bad person, and it's like, oh no, <laughs> know what I mean? But she, I know, mate. She when Delacroix's getting executed, and. Bill, Sam Rockwell, is in his cage. In his cage. I say that because it just reminded me of, of like a monkey. See Aye. like fucking uh, what's what's the film's called again? Planet Apes. I am. See when they're in the cages and they're all going fucking mental. Aye. And he does it, he's like, they're cooking him now. They're cooking <laughs> him now. Oh, he's frying now. It just looks like a monkey trapped in a cage going fucking mental. The way an animal can sense another animal getting hurt. It's amazing, man. And <laughs> by the time they get back after this execution, he's fucking wrecked toys from all that. <laughs> know what I mean? Aye, because Aye, he just gets half on death for what I can see. Know what I mean? Which is, I, I always wondered, and all right, we know that he killed the two wee lassies that John get the blame for, right? What is it he done that got him caught? Know what I mean? He killed three people. Was it? And one was a pregnant woman. <laughs> uh, what do you call him? Uh, Harry, the wee guard of the glasses. Uh-huh. He says, he says that at some point, one was a one was a pregnant lady. Um, so I was in there to finally get caught, but you're like that. It's not just day three and the two wee lashes, but the fuck else is he get away with? Do you know what I mean? <laughs> Throughout exactly. life. Exactly. But, aye. Uh, they allude to herself about John not having a background. Gary Cicini says it. Says it just as if he just fell out the fucking sky. <laughs> says, but what with the depression? People just roaming the state, roaming the country. There's no day to keep tabs on anybody. There's no border control. Yep. So people, you know, when Bonnie and Clyde had a fucking good run at it, I know, you know what I mean? Yeah. But, well, I was going to say, I know. See, another thing that plays its part in getting you totes the mosh and in the fields and hashtag downward face twisty smile. <laughs> see the music and it. See just the, the score as you have taken to see. Score, man. <laughs> see that? See just when the music comes in with stuff at all, man. Uh, that plays a part in just manipulating you. Know what I mean? 100%. By the way, it's akin, obviously, for good reason. It's like a mirror image of Shawshank, score wise, music wise. But the one, the uplifting score in this is just, you're right, every time Mr. Jingles appears, it's. It's happy. You're right, mate. The music plays a lot of, a lot in this. It just sets the mood, sets the tone for the scene and the act that's coming up. Aye. So, what about. Uh, 
What about Paul? Can him to Jan with his new pecker working <laughs> in all that? Man? Let's get it on. <laughs> I'm making beef stew tonight, but I bet you fancy a sausage. <laughs> bow, 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 bow. <laughs> I just get shame stares at her ass in that big floral dress. You kind of see her ass. <laughs> it's not like that painting. Cooking for you. Oh, uh, uh, I, I fucking hey, red rums that fucking Grand National for <laughs> all night, all night. <laughs> Aye. Oh. But she even he gets the boys over for something to eat, to set out the plan to heal the warden's wife, <laughs> and she alleged to it. Well, he came that day. He came home that day, and he was he was all better. <laughs> 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 you just see big brutal going, eye browing up. Oh. I I can see when he goes back to John and he he, he takes John uh, the conference and he goes, your your missus is pleased. Oh yeah, several times. <laughs> Aye, but I'll wait, man. Hey, you gonna give me some of that cornbread as well, ain't you, big fucker? Don't hold out on me. I think I'll keep the rest for myself. Aye, but even oh, when... Paul gives a couple of bits to Mr. Jingles and Dell, and Paul gives it to Dell like a fucking a waiter, courtesy of the gentleman across the way. Do you know what I mean? Just <laughs> pleasant and nice. Aye. Aye. Again, it's, it's. See, apart from Percy and Wild Bill, everybody that's on the mile is just. They're nice people. You know what I mean? It's like. It's like they're just coexisting. Nobody's an equilibrium. Aye. Nobody's out of order, causing difficulties, not us, not I mean. And then you obviously get they two assholes. But <laughs> just... he's an asshole. <laughs> His father before him was an asshole. <laughs> Hence the fucking phrase shut him out. <laughs> Aye. Ah, but it's a side. Everything. Smashing. Oh, and the so, whole ensemble. Is there anything at all in the film that irks you? Anything you think, ah, I could have done that better, or no, I wasn't even point with that kind of thing. Anything at all? Ah, uh, the, <laughs> the only thing that annoys me, and I know it would just defeat the whole purpose of the film and all that, it would just be for everybody to know that John wasn't guilty. Know what I mean? But obviously that's that's just me wanting a happy ending. Know what I mean? I mean, I don't know who does they want a happy ending, but <laughs> it's just I say I certainly like them. <laughs> oh hi, hi. I would uh, I would happily pay money for a happy ending in every eventuality in life. Uh, hand over fist, fist over hand. <laughs> Rapid fire. There we go. <laughs> oh, there we go now. But but that's that's just my one thing. Like, I, or maybe just even see mere glimpses into John Coffey's past. Know what I mean? Maybe flesh out the character a wee bit more. But even that's just pernickety stuff. Know what I mean? That's just you wanting mere to a film that already gives you everything you need. Know what I mean? Exactly, mate. I, I, I feel the same. You're exactly right. You, you always sit and wonder how they get their scars, where's he came from, what's his backstory, how did Paul know fight for his case after his death that he was he was innocent and Wild Bill admitted it or something before he got shot by Percy and that's how Percy went up his nut. Hmm. You know what I mean? But I just for me, I, I can't think of anything at all, it, at all that's missing or needed or was done wrong. I just think the film is, as I said at the start, 10 out of 10 for me, man. Aye. Uh, percent You're the same, mate. <laughs> Aye. So there you go, folks. 20 out of 20 for 1999's The Green Mile. Brilliant. Absolutely brilliant. Can't say any more about it. Um, if you haven't seen... If, if you haven't seen this, we're probably no friends anyway, but <laughs> get it watched. <laughs> get it watched. Get the hankies out. It's like, by the way, it's like, as I said, and even when I went to see the pictures the first ever time, it was the quickest three and a bit hours I've ever sat watching something. 
Do you know what I mean? Really, it just completely flies in. Know what I mean? Because it's it's paced well. There's no dead space. Every scene means something to the story. It's just just well written. Genuinely, that's why I was saying, Stephen. Obviously, when we started talking, how it never won. Even best adapted like screenplay or something like that. Know what I mean? I know it's right. apparently it's very faithful to the book, but. How would any win like any Oscar? It just baffles me, man. Sometimes I'm like that. What's who decides this? Know what I mean? But Aye, flavor. Who's the flavor of the month that time? You know what I mean? Aye. Let's have a wee. Let's have a wee look here before we go. Right. <sighs> 1999 Oscars. Oh, best. Oh Jesus. No more depressed, mate. Shakespeare in love. Oh, for fuck's sake, man. <laughs> no, man. Oh. Man, the, the awards ceremony highlight was Whoopi Goldberg coming in dressed as Queen Victoria. Jesus Christ, man. Shakespeare and lover. I'm now thoroughly depressed. Is that... What one is that again? I've never seen it. I think Gwyneth Paltrow's in it. Ah, she got the Oscar, didn't she? Best actress. Oh, that's 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 poor. That I, we've actually spoke about that before. We've spoke Aye. about that before, mate. Because I'm sure Saving Private Ryan was the same year. Ah, you're right. Aye. By the way, I guess who was one of the hosters on this way back when? Fucking Chris Rock. <laughs> Loves the Oscars, that boy. <laughs> Oh, bro. Oh. Judy, Judy Dench get Best Supporting Actress. Uh, James Coburn, Best Supporting Actor. What the fuck was he in? I don't know. As I say, I've never seen Shakespeare in Love, so... Nah. Uh, Steven, Steven Spielberg get Best Director for Private, Private Ryan, so you're right, mate. Steven Private Ryan was the same kind of thing. Roberto Benizini, Best Actor. Never heard him. Shakespeare in Love, probably. Mm-hmm. And Gwyneth Paltrow, aye. Aye. So Shakespeare in Love wins Best Picture. That is fucking. I might watch that now. Although it doesn't sound like my kind <laughs> I know of thing. that's that's twice as cuffed, smashing films. So maybe need to watch it myself. <laughs> but I've got a feeling it's going to be just pompous shit. Know what I mean? Aye, that's the day that afternoon again. Didn't he just go for some something obscure pure fucking thing? Aye, aye. it's aye. There's a lot of stuff like that. But enough about Hollywood. <laughs> Aye, I know, enough about Hollywood, because we've got enough of on Twitter and all. Have right. you seen Debar Dubato's <laughs> nine-minute adaptation of The Cigarette Paper? What? Aye. No? Uh, La Pan. It's a Spanish <laughs> black and white film about bread. Know what I mean? Like, what? <laughs> oh, it's- Oops, I'd say I swear to you, honestly, it's an up and coming actor. It's Czechoslovakian. <laughs> um, it's uh, Libir, Libomir Vinsonko. Oh, <laughs> just he commands us. If they, if they get into David Libosionko, by any chance? <laughs> Maybe I. I think a Czechoslovakian <laughs> who's shite. <laughs> Libosionko. Oh, have you, have you been watching anything else? Have you been on? Have you been watching anything else this week? I finished Ashoka. Ashoka, sorry. I keep saying Ashoka. Ashoka is a fucking Indian restaurant in Glasgow. Um, <laughs> sorry, mate, you know, I spit that out. I've been watching the Ashoka, like a big rabid starving bastard <laughs> sitting in my motor waiting in the opening. Sorry. <laughs> finished Ashoka. It was good. I liked the, I liked the ending. By the way, as a series, it is fucking littered with potholes, inaccuracies, crap dialogue and stuff like that. But as a Star Wars fan, I just I just watched it, you know, I didn't sit there and be judgmental. Mm. But there's a lot wrong with it. Some of the dialogue I mean Thrawn when Thrawn came into it, I, I say I text you and says, by the way, what one of the best adaptations I've seen for animation into into mm. real life. And then he opened his fucking mouth, didn't he? 
<laughs> might have been a master tactician, might have been the boss of Darth Vader, might have been the highest dude on the Empire and all that. But we're a Star Destroyer full of fucking stormtroopers stranded on a planet with Ezra Bridger for years and they couldn't find him. And end up, he was only two miles away. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> There's just stuff like that all the way through it. Hera as well, played by uh, Ewan McGregor's wife. Even in even in the animation, I'm like, ah, what are goggles for? But just sit and tap your head goggles. Just get on with them. Uh, you got to wear them. Do you know what I mean? She's and why do you always take? She's got two eyes up there. <laughs> Maybe. And you're like, I know, Hera. Why why are you always taking? Your your child on fucking dangerous missions. Right. Just there's there's so much fan service in it, and it's visually stunning. It was it was worth a watch, but if you're going to pick shit out, it you'll be annoyed to death. Yeah. So I finished that. Finished uh, murders in the building, and film I watched. Oh, I watched the uh, Mission Impossible, mate. All night. I think it was a film of two halves, mate. I thought the second half was a drag, to be honest with you. I know it's leading up to the second part, the second film. I just thought, come on, fucking uh, hurry up here. Could be finished an hour ago. Started off great, I know. Uh, I think it's a bit fucking... What is, what is it they call it? The, where they've got the key for the uh, this AI that's controlling... Fucking the McGuffin. guy that shot the woman that got blamed for <laughs> a year ago and all that. So it was all right. Yeah, it was a, it was maybe a six for me. It's not the best one. Anyway. No, the one before it with Henry Cavill in it was brilliant, man. Oh, it was absolutely brilliant. So superb. Even just the way Henry Cavill fucking gets ready. <laughs> as if he's got two shockers on his wrists <laughs> for the fight. Brilliant, man. What have you been watching anyway? Ah. Uh, not much, mate. See, because we've done Pirates of the Caribbean, mate. I went down, I've just, I'm a pirate haunt. <laughs> it was Cutthroat Island, Muppets Treasure Island. <laughs> Tell you, mate. Watching Hook after, I. <laughs> Aye, mate. I watched that. It just didn't stop. It didn't stop. And I went and bought myself a bottle of uh, crack and spice rum. That's just going to be. say that. Put you on the night, and I'm. Oh fuck, man. The what about you mentioned it last week? Uh, Master and Commander. That's fucking tremendous. That film. Aye. Did you watch that? No, oh, I've of course I've watched that recently, but but that just sends me doing another. Aye, that just takes see... you doing a Armistad and all that kind of stuff. Aye, it? And... aye. I end up watching yeah. like the Alamo and all that stuff after that. No, I mean, <laughs> before you know it, you're involved in the slave trade and fucking. <laughs> <laughs> and then you say, in your westerns, you're back in the Alamo, Red Indians are back, and they're saying, oh, Jesus. <laughs> it's the Mexicans next, Jesus Christ. <laughs> but, um, I'm considering going to see The Exorcist. I don't know if it's going to be, I don't think it'll be tonight, because I think the Scotland game's on, so there's a good chance it'll be Friday night. Is that a re-release? Or is no, it it's, it's a redone? No, it's a foley up. It's like a new Exorcist. Exorcist Believer, I think it is. I've I try not to read reviews and all that, see when it comes to horror films. Because you might be shocked and surprised, didn't you? Aye. Plus, see sometimes like the horror community go I oh. suck. It's, it's, <laughs> the horror community fans just they go at it's the best thing since fucking blah blah blah. And then I go and watch it and I'm going, This is really, really, really bad. Know what I mean? It's See, another thing as well. You talk about the horror fraternity, which there seems to be a lot of, more than a lot more, but they can't hold their fucking wish, can't they, no? No. They just... <laughs> I've seen this, this is what happens. <laughs> I hate everything. So it's... Aye. That, that's the plan. We'll see if it comes to fruition. But I've got a lot of spare time, you see. A lot of spare time. To, must to be do nice what I want to do. <laughs> must be nice having holidays when I'm not taking half yeah. Fucking great. Aye. But aye. So that's the plan. 
know what I mean? There's other things in the cinema than other pictures. But mm-hmm. so it's nah, it's a bit meh. You know what I mean? You get anything in mind for next week? I've not actually gave it a thought. But I'll find something in the catalogue. <laughs> the catalogue. Fuck, I've already got my one picked for after next week. <laughs> what I mean? Oh, so Just because fine. I keep putting it off, keep putting it off. And there's a wee clue. It is uh, the month to do it, shall we say. Oh. Uh, so, But looking forward to seeing what you can come up with. Yeah. Uh, because you usually you, you always pick a belter, so you do. Oh, Apart yeah. from that Army of Darkness pish. <laughs> and they live. <laughs> and you'd say that to me about fucking Skyfall and <laughs> uh, what else? Can't remember. Aye. Uh, but, aye. Uh, well, once I know, I'll. I'll let you know, and then we'll do the thing. <laughs> Ooh, guessing uh, game. It's a mystery. <laughs> it's I a mystery. <laughs> so, thanks very much, folks. Um, once again, we had a right good surge in the YouTube this week. Um, it's come back down for the lofty heights of 1,700 watches of the Untouchables. To bust the 400 mark. Take that every week. Don't care for right. uh, Pirates of the Caribbean. Uh, so thanks. Tune in, subscribe, watch, like, share, listen, give us feedback. We don't get feedback. Um, used to find myself always getting feedback, but you never get anything else back. So it's a vicious circle, that bastard. <laughs> I'm going to do us a favour. Going to go on to our, uh, our TikTok, please. Give Chris a wee follow on there because it's not taken off the way we'd hoped. Uh, yeah. Still in the is it still in the teens? Ah, it's still in its teens, but it's it's yeah. TikTok. No, I mean, I'll I'll need a we we'll need a some sort of fucking uh, urban challenge there. We we'll need to do the ice fucking bucket challenge or something. No, I mean, oh, fucking hashtag fucking lashes shaking my tits. That's what it, hashtag that, and you'll get a million clicks. No, I mean, uh, that's it. I've, I it's just. It's too much of that shit. It's like a shop now, TikTok, isn't it? TikTok shop. Aye. People like to send you, sell you bog rolls and yep. uh, fucking pop-it games and all that kind of <laughs> stuff. Aye, some they, good deals on it. Aye, the youngins like to kit out their house. <laughs> well, I did get the 72 toilet rolls for £13.85, <laughs> so I can't, I can't grumble. But that's me thinking of my family. See, I was not selfish <laughs> there. I was thinking of all their oh. asses, <laughs> All the bums in the house. It was me. You were just thinking you were a big ass wipe. <laughs> I hate the toilet in my house because it's like jamming a fucking. Oh, it's just see me doing a shite. It must be the most horrible looking thing in my house ever because I'm jammed into this wee back corner. Mother. The, between the wall and the shower. Mother, you know I mean? why does daddy turn into a Picasso when he's on the toilet? I can't he stand up without another gallon of pish falling at me. Uh-huh. Uh, it's fucking. <laughs> Sign of the times. Anyway, I'm glad you had, glad I told you all that. Aye. <laughs> I know. <laughs> right, mate. I'm going. I'm going away and make myself a wee couple of rolls and sausage, so I can stay fat and I can't fit in my toilet. <laughs> aye. Well, hi again. Cheers, everybody, for listening. See you next time. I'll be the last one left when the lights go out. I'm down to one last breath, but I can't stop now. We all fall down sometimes, yeah, but that's just life. So cross my heart and hope to die, baby. I was born to f- fight the fear when I feel like dying. I'm trying to fly high, but I'm not a pilot. Can't deny it. There's some days I feel idiotic. Just a product of a system where you're lucky. Just